Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar with the team behind South Dakota State University's very successful giving day brought to you by Hubbub Fundraising. I'm your host, Scott Remington, a digital fundraising specialist and customer success manager here at Hubbub. First, I wanna thank everyone that is joining us today. Before I hand over to the team, I wanna give a little introduction of Hubbub Fundraising for those of you that have not heard of us before. We specialize in digital fundraising, specifically giving days, crowdfunding, and ambassadors. Our goal is to provide you with a beautiful white label platform that has the look and feel of your amazing institution while helping you achieve your goals of raising more dollars, donors, and even improving your ambassador participation. Whether you are a seasoned digital fundraising shop or you're running your first giving day, we provide you with the tools and expertise to find, recruit, and empower potential ambassadors to be the driving force behind your digital fundraising campaigns, such as giving days. Typically, the, from the fundraising campaigns, we see 15 to 30% of the donations come from a peer ask. If you're interested in hearing more about those tools and services after the webinar, then please feel free to reach out. We would be more than happy to help. Now, on to the real reason we are here. I want to welcome an incredible team that I personally worked with to help manage, launch, execute their incredibly successful giving day, aptly named One Day for State. There will be a chance to ask questions directly to the team at the end. You should, you should all see a little Q&A section on the right hand of your screens. Please pop in if there are any questions you have for the team at any time and be sure to hang around until the end to hear the answers. Enjoy and over to you team. Welcome everybody. Well, first this is Aaron Glidden and I just wanna uh, thank you all for joining us on the webinar today. We're excited to share what we've learned from our experience with conducting our first ever giving day, One Day for State. Just a quick introduction of who is gonna be presenting today and kind of share you a little bit of the team. I wanna emphasize that this project was a full team effort by everyone at the foundation, but just a few of us that are gonna be talking today, you'll hear from Heidi Helpwell, our Assistant Director of Loyalty Giving, Jen McLeod, our Content Strategist, Arian Bundy, our VP for Strategy and Innovation, and I'm Erin Glidden, the Director of Loyalty Giving. Here, topics we'll be covering within the next 45 minutes or so. Again, we're really excited to have the opportunity to share what we've learned as we are planning and executing our first ever giving day. And then like Scott mentioned, there will be question and answer time at the end. A few facts about South Dakota State University and the foundation. The university, we were founded in 1881 and we're located in Brookings, South Dakota. For reference, that's about 200 miles just west of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Our enrollment is uh, around 12,572 students with undergrad and, and graduate students, and we have around 80,000 living alumni. For the past five years, the foundation has raised on average $50 million a year, and that is usually coming from about 9,500 unique donors annually. And then a fun fact, we are the only D1 university that has a jackrabbit as our mascot. So up in that corner, you can see a photo of our mascot um, Jack. And then there's also a photo of a real live jackrabbit. Before we get into the uh, meat of the actual webinar, we just wanted to share our overall results for our first uh, giving day, one day for state. We raised just under $300,000 from 1,196 unique donors. And we uh, were really ecstatic about these results and we were completely blown away by the success of the day. So just really quick, uh, we wanted to provide an overview of some of the giving trends that really inspired our decision to move forward with the giving day at all. Um, as most of you are also considering a day of giving yourself or possibly already running one, you're likely familiar with at least a few of these, so I won't take too much time. Um, but we all know that research continues to show that online channels are gaining popularity, both as a method of donor giving, but also really the way that donors want to receive communications and interact with the nonprofits they support. And this is across generations. There's a reporting a decline in preference for phone and an increase in preference for online and digital mediums. So specifically here at SDSU, our annual program strategy, frankly, was predominantly built around phone. And so we were personally feeling the effects of some of those declines represented here. And we're a small team. We have two in our annual programs department, and we wanted to approach growth in our digital and online efforts strategically. Um, we couldn't be everything to everyone. 
And we wanted something that could have kind of a unified message and a way to put multiple resources into one large impactful event versus initiating several smaller individual efforts. And so for us, one day for state was a solution for those things and really provided a great opportunity for us to kick off our more multi-channel approach. What objectives did we want to achieve specifically with our giving day? Um, and what are some of the ways that we did so? Through our 24 hour time limit, we here chose to go from midnight to midnight. Um, and offering our challenge matches, we were able to create a sense of urgency to the day to further inspire participation. Donor participation was our main goal of the day, more so for us than dollars raised. And our messages reinforced that concept, kind of with messages that said your gift matters no matter the size. And our challenges were also based on number of donors. And we had contests and social media messaging that promoted participation just by celebrating all that it means to be a part of state and encourage people to share their yellow and blue spirit and their campus memories via social media channels throughout the day. And so again, for us, that goal was more focused on encouraging participation. So the first question you may ask yourself is, okay, how do I even start a, plan, a planning a giving day? To get started, I would suggest just getting a few members of your team together with a whiteboard and have a brainstorming session. We knew we wanted to have a giving day, but honestly didn't know where to start. We had gathered some information from other universities, listened to the webinars, done various things. But during that brainstorming session, we were able just to write down any and all ideas that maybe would be able to be included within our giving day and kind of decide upon what direction we wanted to go. In the coming slides, we'll kind of give you some examples of categories and areas that maybe you can think about while you're doing your own brainstorming session. One big question you'll need to answer is, are you gonna partner with the vendor or not? Initially, we weren't even sure if we needed to partner with the vendor. It was one of those, well, do we need to? Can we just do it in-house? Can we, you know, maybe try a giving day this year and then go forward, maybe then partner with the vendor to actually, you know, initiate that investment. But after doing demos with a number of different companies, it was imperative by the size and the scope of our team that it was in our best interest to partner with a vendor to provide that platform for us. This is one of the biggest pieces to the giving day and it's a question you're gonna to wanna to answer early on in that process. So after working with a number of different companies doing a number of different venues, vendors, we decided to, our best partnership would be with Hubbub. Not only was their platform a really good fit for what our needs were, we really liked the fact they had a social ambassador platform we could utilize, plus one of their team members would be on site for our day and help us conduct that first ever giving day. The other piece you're gonna to wanna to think about is getting your campus partners on board, whether that be the president, provost, college deans, athletics, alumni association. A giving day is a whole campus-wide community event and you'll wanna make sure everyone is bought in and on the same page before you get too far into the process. Next is picking a date. One of the scariest parts about planning a giving day is picking the actual date, but you just need to take that leap of faith and get it on the calendar. But how do you pick a date? Is there a time of the month or a year you should be avoiding due to other campus events or activities? Or on the flip side, is there already an event happening on campus that would be a natural partnership for your giving day? Weighing the pros and cons of having your giving day at the beginning of the fiscal year versus the end. Are there certain black updates you need to take into account? Are there other community events, big concerts, sporting events, national events that um, you would want to avoid? Some people hold their giving days on Giving Tuesday. Is that something you would want to do? We ultimately decided to have our one day per state be at the end of August because it was right when school was back in session. There's just natural buzz around campus. Our fiscal year is calendar year, so it is towards the end of our calendar year. Um, but we didn't want to have our giving day you know, in February when it was snowy and just kind of crummy outside. We also have been talking a lot about um, with giving days. Arian mentioned our day was midnight to midnight. Some other schools, they do theirs based on the number of minutes that their school has been founded. So for us, it would be 1881, which would be a little bit more than 31 hours total. So you need to figure out what's best for you. There's no one size fits all. You just need to take that, take that leap of faith and just get that date on the calendar and start planning. So then once you've picked a date, the next thing we would suggest you doing is do is develop a timeline. Here we put that you would wanna have about nine months to plan so you can um, 
get everything done, but you really realistically could do it in a short amount of time frame. That nine months just helps you have a little bit more time to plan everything out and not having to tackle everything all at once, but it can be done. Having a central tracking document for all parties is really beneficial to ensure that you can all stay on task and meet deadlines. Um, another piece is if you are going to be partnering with the vendor, you want to make sure you have their timelines uh, in with your overall planning. The website is a really big piece of the overall day, so working with them to make sure you meet those deadlines is very important. And then I would suggest holding weekly or bi-weekly meetings to discuss items with the team and plan out your big areas of the day. Here on this slide, it just is a quick snapshot of one of the trackers we used. We had it broken down month by month, leading out up to the month of August. And then during the month of August, we had every all of our tasks broken down by week. And then the 72 hours surrounding the event, the pre and post, we actually broke it out by hour. So everybody on the team knew exactly what steps needed to be done. And we can hopefully prevent any balls from being dropped. So you've already taken the leap of faith and you picked the day. Well, the next gut check you're going to have is an area that's going to make you sweat. It's picking that goal. I'm pretty sure this photo on the screen here is an accurate description of how our team looked when we told our goal to our CEO. And he said, OK, well, that's one gift every three minutes for 24 hours. No big deal. Yikes. Like it was it was gut checking. But we decided, you know, we got to go for it. We're going to do it. So you really you just need to decide upon a goal, whether it's going to be your internal goal, your external goal, whatever you're going to do. It can be donors or dollars. You just need to pick one. We'd suggest focusing on one of either the dollars raised or the donor goal as your message to have it be clean and concise for your donors. Our primary goal was donor participation to encourage those who have never given before to join our culture of giving. All about participation, like Arian mentioned a couple slides back. But you need to figure out what is best for your institution. An internal dollar goal is kind of where challenge funds can help secure making sure you have money in the bank kind of before the actual day. But we'll talk more about challenge funds in the upcoming slides. We were actually really hesitant going into picking our goal and making it public. But after being advised by Scott, our hubbub rep, we decided to set an overall public goal. Scott helped us set up that goal by basing a lot of the information on data analytics by looking at our annual donors, online donors, social media presence, and then really setting a realistic goal, but also something that is a stretch goal, a little bit of a gut churning goal. And then he kept kind of re reminding us that even if you hit that goal, you can continue to push, push forward throughout the day and do increased messages saying, hey, congratulations, we hit that goal. Let's continue. Let's keep stretching. Our initial goal was to have 500 donors, which we hit that by noon. So it was great. But again, we were able to celebrate that. And then we had the challenge funds that were still unfulfilled. That kind of helped us with that messaging. And we can continue to push forward throughout the day. So let's talk a little bit more about challenges. Challenges are what will ultimately make your day successful. Just like what you're doing right now in prepping for our giving day, we listened to a lot of webinars and we read a lot of articles. We learned quickly that match funding challenges would play a key role in motivating donors to participate. To make it possible to achieve our goals, we knew we needed to break down our goals into smaller challenges. There's no one right way to align our challenges. For us, we were determined to have our each college offer a challenge which would unlock by a specific number of donors. So for example, our College of Engineering unlocked $2,500 for every 25 donors who contributed up to $10,000. As another example, we had a challenge donor who offered $5,000 in new scholarships if over 50 first-time donors gave their first ever gift as part of One Day per State. We had to admit that this one took some additional tracking and messaging, but we are pleased to report that we blew past the $50 donor goal with 32% of the donor days or with 32% of the day's donors making their first time gift. These challenges not only inspired donations, but also further engaged our campus partners in the day's success. And you know, when it came down to it, bottom line, small gifts make a big difference, especially when pulled together. Younger donors want to be a part of a cause, even if we're not at a point in their lives to make maybe a more sizable gift. A younger donor might not be able to contribute a large amount of money to a particular project. However, knowing their $20 could help unlock a challenge, help them to 
see their impact playing an even bigger part in the day. According to the Millennial Impact Project, 71% of millennials said that they would likely give if they could increase their impact by seeing their gifts matched by another donor. People are more inclined to respond when goals and deadlines are involved, and we definitely saw that success lead to the day. Um, one last thing we also like to mention, too, is being able to track the progress of these challenges in real time was a significant factor in our decision to use a third-party vendor. Hub of software allowed these gifts to be recorded and reported in our donors in real time so that we could see the progress and status of their college and program of interest throughout the day. So marketing is going to be an essential component of your giving day. It's important that you gain excitement and you really share that message with your donors and alumni so that they know what's expected of them and how they can best make a difference as part of your day. So a few things that may help you get started here. Consider establishing a brand for your event. We knew we wanted to have a cohesive brand to make the various messages and promotions of the day more easily recognizable. So since this was our first ever giving day, we wanted to be sure that our donors and alumni and our campus partners knew what the excitement was all about, even if they weren't sure just yet what a giving day evolved. And the key is not to overthink this. We quickly pulled together an event name, a hashtag and a tagline, and then we created, we um, generated creative design to support it. And then we used it wherever possible. We used it in our videos, our email signatures, our campus and community communications, our social media profile images, so that when our donors and alumni saw this, the visuals allowed them to quickly recognize that these efforts were all part of the same event and to be intrigued by that. And it's easy to get overwhelmed by the idea of marketing, but again, I'm going to make a small suggestion. Just start drafting a plan, a simple plan. Nothing elaborate is needed. We used a simple Excel document. Erin showed it us a few slides ago. We had different channels of communication, matching a lot of the areas you see here and then a few others. Um, we broke it down by month and then week to week through the month of August, which was the month we held our event. And then by hour to hour increments, the day before, day of, and day after. Um, and really, we just kind of thought through what are some of the things we want to say? What are some of the things we want to do? And then we fit it into that structure. We'd ask, okay, we want to do this. So to who do we want to send that? When should we send it? And which one of these channels or which one of these one channels makes the most sense to do that? Um, and really, that's just how it started. And we were able to put something pretty simple to Together, that really worked as a good tool to guide us through the day. So when do you start promoting your giving day? One of our best takeaways from Hubbub, which was our partner, was that you do not need to create too many communications too far in advance. You want to wait until closer to the day to keep that momentum. So one month prior, we did a simple save the date teaser release through social media. And then with Hubbub's advice, we waited and had a few more communications a week prior, but really focused on that two days prior for the majority of our messages. And our effort was predominantly digital. We're considering maybe doing a direct mail piece this year, uh, but, but last year it was really predominantly digitally focused. So we sent a variety of emails, some with general messages, others we segmented to align with our college challenge matches. Um, overall, we sent about 40 separate email messages. So it totaled over about 380,000 emails sent, um, but each donor received about six to nine emails total. And you might feel you're sending too many emails. And to be honest, we did receive some feedback that suggested we may be as well. But we also, however, saw a significant increase in giving in the time periods immediately following each email. So their impact was noticed as well. And it's a fine balance. We're thinking through that element a bit more this year, but it's important to remember that with a digitally focused event, email plays such a significant role that it shouldn't be shied away from either. Hubbub also advised us to be more selective in the videos that we produced. Um, at the time, we were considering an individual video for each college and each challenge match. Um, and Hubbub really stepped in and helped us to understand we didn't need to do that, not only from a time and resource perspective, but also then that your multiple messages often actually compete against one another. So you're better off to really do one to three main videos and then repurpose those in multiple channels, be that email, social, through your social ambassadors for better reach and better results. 
So we did one that was a bit aspirational to kind of help describe what is a giving day and what does it mean for SDSU. We did one that was a bit more playful and we used our mascot to kind of describe the actual how to participate in a giving day. And then our third one, we used students on campus to say thank you and that was sent at the end of the night. And then lastly, through social media, perhaps one of the most fun elements of the day for us um, was we ran a social media contest that we initiated where we encouraged jackrabbits to post an image of their yellow and blue with the hashtag one day for state. And it was really fun to watch our tag board feed that day and just really see the images that rolled in. Um, we saw everything from pets to baby announcements to wedding photos on campus. Um, and so for us, it was just really special. It reinforced that this is a very special place to so many people. And we felt very fortunate to be part of an effort that helped bring out that celebration. Social media played a key role in our communication strategy. We know that not only do donors have a growing preference for online channels, but many indicate that, indicate that they prefer to hear about causes to support from their peers. In addition, we know that ever-changing Facebook algorithms make it more and more challenging to achieve organic reach to engage our audience. In short, we knew that we needed help in telling the story and spreading the, spreading the excitement across our social media platforms that day. And we were going to need our need to rely on our fellow jackrabbits to do so. Hubbub Social Ambassador Tool is a great resource to help with this. Our social ambassador signed up to our One Day for State Social Ambassador platform and agreed to share our content and messages throughout the day. Every time we announced a milestone achievement or shared an encouraging message, that suggested post was emailed to this team to either immediately repost to their platforms or in some of the most fun examples, to add in their own unique images, texts, or GIFs, and give it their own style too. Hubbub's tool provided a tracking system that measured the reach of each ambassador and showed that progress on a leaderboard, which created a friendly competition for prizes. We offered things like home football, home football game suite passes, or an on-campus breakfast and coffee delivery for a day, and partnered with our university bookstore to offer some fun SDSU swag. Overall, it was a fun way to engage volunteers who wanted to help with this cause and allow them to join in and help from wherever they may be located using online channels they were already familiar with. This can also be a great way to engage some of your campus partners. We had a group called our Campus Ambassadors, which was basically one main point of contact within each academic college and or representing each individual program challenge. This group was responsible for telling the story specifically for their college or program as part of One Day for State. This helped make the challenges a more campus-wide effort, but also helped to make the best use of various social media groups and listservs that these colleges have established with their current students, alumni, and program supporters. It was a way to benefit from the reach of their followers for those various pages as well. We also wanted to involve students in our day and chose a couple of ways to do so. We made a point to include information about One Day for State in various student publications and posted marketing materials in main student spaces. We also distributed 500 small gift bags by golf cart to students walking around campus that day, each including some chocolates and a card further, further describing both the 24-hour fundraising challenges as well as the student event we were hosting at the Student Union, a central hub on campus. Our student event featured music, games, snacks, and we know this is no surprise that students love food, especially free, free food. We involve the campus radio station, cheerleaders, our homecoming committee, our university president and provost, various athletic coaches, and our student marching band over the course of a 10 hour event. We were really pleased with the event and did learn a few things that we can share with you as well. We'll likely shorten the event for this year and are considering having a student event during the day and possibly a community focused event in the evening. 10 hours was a lot of fun, but also far more time than, time than needed to make an impact. We also learned that we don't need to have so many activities and games, but instead can select a few key ones to highlight and generate excitement. We also would like to better integrate more students both into the planning and execution of the day, as it is fun to see students engaging one another and learning about the importance of philanthropy. Okay, so yay! Congratulations, you successfully completed your day. It was a big success. Now what? 
Your donors, friends, and alumni in the campus community are really eager to hear about the results. Try to give some initial results as soon as possible. With gifts still arriving in the mail or just offline gifts you have to enter, you have an idea of what you raised, but you're not quite exactly sure on the amount. So we try to use that language of we've raised more than, we've done a little bit more than this. Um, on the screen, you can see a couple samples of the emails that we sent the next morning in the Facebook post. Both featured that thank you video that Arian previously was talking about. And then we rolled out our final results the next week. If you're partnering with a vendor, be sure to carve out time after the event for some data entry. The CSV file you receive may not easily tell you if this John Smith is the same donor that's already in your database. So it does take some time to make sure that you align all your gifts with the correct donors. Then another thing you're going to want to do right after the event is your thank yous. Here's a list of people that you want to keep in mind for your thank yous, whether that's donors, challenge donors, campus ambassadors, day of volunteers. You'll want to think about how not only can you thank them, but how can you steward them throughout the year. One way we did this was sending out quarterly emails to our donors, letting them know an update on their gifts, that their gifts still are making an impact, whether that's three, seven months, um, and kind of letting them know some actual stories of students that have been benefited by their dollars that they were um, able to receive. So kind of do, to do a recap and kind of begin to wrap this up before we get into the question and answer area, here are some key takeaways that may help you have a successful giving day. One, set a goal. Use that goal to help tell your story on why reaching that goal is so important. Have a team in place. This task is way too big for one person. A giving day can't be planned in a day, so be sure you give yourself enough time to plan and execute that. Have a brand so you can have clear, concise messaging. Challenge funds will not only help you secure seed money to start your day, but it will help you it will help motivate others to give during the day. Make sure you have campus buy-in. This day is all about the campus event, rallying together the foundation, the campus community, athletics, the alumni association, so you want all parties to be involved. Don't forget about your post-event stewardship and thank yous. And lastly, during the hustle and bustle of the day, don't forget to take a minute and just sit back and celebrate all that you've accomplished. So we're entering the home stretch. Uh, but when we were planning, we kept asking ourselves, well, what results have others had through a giving day? So as we close out our time with you today, we just wanted to quickly share a few of those with you as well. Overall, we were tremendously excited about how the day turned out. Within the week following the event, we pulled together an infographic to help better share our results with our campus community and donors for One Day for State, share on our digital platforms. So we'll just point out a couple of those statistics that reinforce some of our overall objectives. We personally value that over 80% of the gifts given that day were $100 or less. This was a particular effort for us where gifts of smaller sizes were encouraged. And we feel the support of the concept of participation as we wanted individuals to feel that their gifts, no matter the size, were able to make a difference because we all came together. 90% of our gifts were made online, which reinforced our desire to appeal to our more digitally inclined audience. And we also saw 106 current SDSU students give a gift that day, many their first gift ever, which was a great accomplishment. As I mentioned before, our social ambassadors made a huge impact. You can see that the spread of support for our day came not just from South Dakota, but the buzz was heard across the country as donors and alumni from 38 states made a gift. In addition, we blew our initial goal of 50, 50 social ambassadors out of the water, with a final count of 256 signed up to spread the word that day. Having that army of people ready to share that content and help us spread our message help lead to the successful completion not only of our overall goal of 500 donors, but also to the successful completion of all 20 plus challenges that day. Now, I just love this slide. See, there were some who questioned whether this effort was entirely based on gaining support specifically from just millennials. We wanted to reinforce that this was a donor-wide effort and that this range helped to showcase that. Our youngest donor that day was 18 years old, our oldest was 92, a great span across generations. And then our whole mindset for that day was, no matter the gift size, you can make a difference, and really targeting those non-donors 
and letting them know that they can be a part of our culture of giving. And with our some of our challenges where we had that first time donor challenge, we actually had 32% of our donors that day be our first time donors, which is pretty fantastic. So our last slide before the Q&A portion, we just wanna leave you with this message from one of our recent graduates. And no, he was not prompted to write this message, um, but it truly embodies what we wanted to accomplish with One Day for State. So he writes, about four months ago, I became an alum. Today, I became a donor. And then he goes on to describe gifts he made to individual areas that made a significant impact on his time here as a student at State. And he ends it in saying, every gift matters, what can you give? And frankly, we could not have said that any better. So that sums up our experience with our first ever giving day. And we hope that you've learned some things and gotten a few key takeaways that you can now go and implement into your planning to be able to wrap your day of giving as well. And now we'll kick it back to Hubbub to lead us into the Q&A section. Firstly, thank you very much, Erin, Heidi, Jen, and Arian for, uh, for that wonderful presentation. Yeah, we, we've really enjoyed working with you and uh, some really good insights there. Let's kick it off into the Q&A. So, First question, did you consider other platforms? Uh, now, obviously, be honest in this and feel free to say anything you like. <laughs> so we actually did. We went through and we did demos with 10 different vendors. Um, a lot of the, you know, the popular ones out there, the scale funders, the campus um, community gives, mobile cause. Uh, we were trying to be really diligent. One, we didn't even, it was obviously this is our first time doing it. So we didn't know what to even look for within a vendor. So that's why we did kind of a wide scope of just different demos with everybody. And then what we did is we took and narrowed down those 10 to the top three and then brought in uh, different people within the organization, you know, accounting, uh, the database people, just those that would have an important part within the day to make sure that the vendor that we partnered with would be a good fit. And then from there, that's how we uh, decided to go with Hubbub because after those three additional demos, they kind of rose to the top and we felt like it was the best partnership for us. Awesome. And we're, and we're glad you chose us. <laughs> Any, anybody else that's listening, uh, if you haven't put your uh, question in, but you do have one, just head over to the Q&A section on the right and type it in. And for those that have put a question in, you can actually vote for which one you want to hear first. But we should be able to get through uh, through most of them. Uh, next question is from Valerie, and she asks, are other organizations other than schools using this kind of giving day successfully, aside for Giving Tuesday, uh, which is great for all? Yeah, great question. So um, I know Aaron and I personally just a couple weeks ago went to a session on giving days that was hosted at another um, higher education facility. However, at the place itself, they had multiple different nonprofits that were also there in attendance who have also been trying out these platforms. I don't have exact statistics on maybe any of these per se, but it does sound like it is something that other places, like I think we said the uh, Boy Scouts and um, hospital, just other nonprofits that were there. Yeah, that have been utilizing these. Um, one of the things that has been kind of across the board we've heard is Giving Tuesdays are great. Um, but it can be a little bit of a saturated market just because you have so many other nonprofits that you're competing against where sometimes designating a specific day for your cause um, can really kind of benefit just because it makes you stick out a little bit more. And sometimes when you're choosing a different day outside of that, it might be able to create hype or awareness maybe around a certain time during the year or something specific going on. I know some might use it as like an end of the year pool some might do it to associate maybe with a founding year or date or something along that line. So it does seem like it has been successful for other places, even then just a higher education. Okay, so the next question is, it was a question that was uh, posted by somebody who couldn't make the webinar, but they asked, if you could do one thing differently next year, what would it be? Um, I think one of our biggest takeaways from the first year was kind of underestimating getting the message across to some of our campus uh, individuals to try to get their buy-in. That messaging that we originally were trying to say, we weren't necessarily clear and concise on our messaging. We knew what a giving day was, but for them it was this foreign concept. So 
trying to do a better job of clearly, concisely identifying what the day is in a manner that they will be able to grasp. Yeah, that first time around, there's almost an educational element for what giving days are as much as there is for what it's going to look like here. And I don't think we were ready so much of the part of what a giving day is and why it's valuable outside of just kind of what it was going to mean to us. And so we navigated it, but that definitely kind of took us back a, a month or two of progress that maybe we could have moved forward on. Thank you very much. Uh, so the next question, do you have any tips for, for gaining that internal buy-in? I think just communicating as much as you can. And I think the biggest thing here for us was be ready that you may be very, very excited and feel like this is a really good initiative. And some of the, the initial feedback that you get may be possibly confused or a little bit unsure or maybe a little less excited than what you might want. Um, but that I think to give yourself some grace and give a little bit of time for people to kind of catch up. Again, you've been excited about this. You've been thinking about this. You've been researching this. You're ready to go. And you almost got to give them some time to get there too. I will say that coming now into year two, it's almost a different story. And a lot of those conversations, it looks almost 180 degrees different than it did when we were in them last year. So um, just to kind of know that and, and to kind of continue and continue to share and continue to communicate and be very open and transparent and provide as much info as you can. Um, but just to be a little prepared that that, that buy-in might look a little different in year one because people just aren't sure what it is. Um, but again, communicate, share information, share as much as you can in a concise way, as clearly as you can, will be helpful. Yeah, I love that. Over communicate all the time. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Of course, the next question from Taylor. Did you measure challenge progress throughout the day or after the fact? And did Hubbard provide this information or did you did your team have to calculate it? For the majority of our challenges, when we had them specifically for each colleges, the Hubbub tool and the platform was able to do that feature for us, which was one of the big selling points within the overall platform is we didn't have to have somebody here kind of crunching the numbers, updating, you know, it was live real time fee where a donor could make their $50 gift and they would see, you know, their, the bar chart go up. We did have a first time donor challenge where it was specifically to individuals who made a gift. If we were going to have 50 uh, first time donors that day, then a company was going to uh, pledge five, uh, $5,000. And on that end, we had to do it on the back side just because, from the platform side that it didn't link with our database we weren't able to see real lifetime who was a first-time donor but from the uh, csv file we were able to kind of take that with our database and figure out how many first-time donors there were thank you and the next question uh, did you send your emails through hubbub um there were some emails that um must be sent through the hubbub tool um, i think the thank you message that was immediately after their gift um, the message that they got immediately after signing up to be a social ambassador, um, possibly one other one, I think, that I remember that we drafted that had to be sent through the Hubbub tool just the way it worked. On the other end, though, in terms of our overall messaging and branding, things that we sent out, whether that be the one month email out, the one week out or the day of emails, we actually sent all of those through MailChimp. Um, and mostly the reasoning there was it just allowed us to have um, a few more graphics, visuals, some videos, um, different things there. But it also then allowed us to segment our list more clearly. So we did quite a bit of segmentation based on our challenges and some of those things. So that's why we chose to use that. And it was actually a fine partnership. It worked out well. Brilliant. And then the last question we have uh, for the moment, unless anyone else posts a question in the meantime, have there been any issues working with a vendor outside of your time zone? I think for the most part, I would say no. Um, one, Scott is our has been our main contact, and he's here in the U.S. But I know when we uh, had that 24-hour, our site went live at midnight. I was able to work with somebody within the U.K. because for them it was, you know, the next day. And um, overall, I, we've been able to figure out whether that's been communicating through email, phone, or uh, Google Docs, or through the new Reich, uh tool that you guys have offered. So. Overall, I don't think there's been any major issues with working with somebody in a different uh, time zone or across uh, the ocean. 
Awesome. Great to hear. Well, I think that looks like all the questions uh, we have from, from the audience. So uh, firstly, just a, a massive thank you to, to everybody on the SESU team um, for, for putting that together and answering the questions. And thank you to everybody that attended and, and listened today and, and put their questions in. And do be sure to listen out uh, for any future webinars on given days and digital fundraising in, in general. So uh, thanks again, SESU team. It's been been wonderful having you, and take care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.